Hey everyone, welcome back to Do It Yourself Telecom. Uh, this is the second part in a multi-part video series for those who are interested in getting into the network and telecom and even IT uh, industry. This video is targeted towards people who are more interested in the technical work. There is an administrative side to the IT telecom business um, which still requires a great deal of understanding about architecture and technologies but it's a little more geared towards executive level type of uh, role. This is this video series is more focused on people who are, are interested in doing technical work, which is what my experience can can give you the most uh, guidance on. Anyway, so let's get started. Uh, so three ways. Well, the first one is you could simply start at the bottom with no experience, and um, you can use a few different ways to try to get yourself in the door. Uh, one is to work at a support call center. A lot of times they're always looking for people because it's kind of a high turnover uh, environment. This is what's also known as tier one support. So unfortunately these are the people that you talk to whenever you call tech support and they kind of do the initial vetting out of the basics like is it turned on, uh, you know, is it plugged in, do you have lights, things like that. It can be a little monotonous and it is, it is um, you know, it is call center work, uh, but the good news is, is if you could at least deal with that for a little bit, say like for a few months or maybe six months or ideally a year, is it gives you viable, verifiable uh, experience in the industry, which you can then use to apply for some other more meaningful IT job. Um, another way to get in with zero experience is kind of a grunt type of role, which is cable pulling. Now, this is how I got in. While I was going to college, I started pulling cable. Um, for my father's telecom business. I had no interest in going into the IT uh, telecom space. I was actually a music major at the time, if you can believe that. Anyway, here's what's cool about this. So you start doing this cable pulling thing. Now it's hot, sweaty work. You're usually on ladders. A lot of times it's, it's construction type environments. And so you're pulling cable from usually the network distribution frame, you know, usually like what they call like the server room, I guess, uh, out to the locations where the PCs or telephones are going to go. But what happens is you work shoulder to shoulder with the higher level people that actually do the things like the installations of the equipment. And so as you do this, what happens is it's a little bit of a opportunistic on the job training type of, of scenario because because you're working right next to these people, you will inevitably kind of get sucked into some of their work if you seem like somebody they could could teach or trust. So it's a great way if you're kind of a self starter, and you show a lot of initiative, uh, to get your foot in the door and then move your way up. All right, so it's really it's it's how I got started. I started off pulling cable. Uh, I think we were shorthanded. I started doing PBX installations. Again, didn't want to do this. Just kind of started doing it because that was work and we were busy and, and we needed help. And then I got a knack for it and I went on to become you know a, a switch installer and a network guy and a Cisco uh, router installer and an IT guy. I mean, it just went from there. Okay. Um, Unpaid internship. So unpaid internships are usually offered by big companies who uh, are looking for high school or college age students who have already decided that they're going to go into the IT industry but maybe don't know exactly where yet. Uh, oftentimes these are unpaid internships so you have to apply for them and then if you get them basically you come to work at the company on their um, IT department. And you do things like, you know, help desk and, you know, ads, moves and changes of PCs and telephones. And you know, it's a great way to pick up the industry. Uh, but what's neat about it is if, again, kind of like the cable puller thing, if you show some spark and they're interested in you, they may actually invite you to apply for a real job uh, with them, a paid job. All right. So that's that's how to get in with no experience entry level. Now the second one you can do is you can actually go get an education. Now this is true for IT and networking, but a little less so for the telecom space. There, there didn't used to be any telecom training except by simply going to work for like AT&T or something like that. However, now I, I have heard there's some telecom courses out there and there's also some telecom uh, technical schools. So uh, the thing I don't like about the education way of doing this is that it... Um, Unless you're in high school and they're just offering these courses 
uh, or if you're already in college and you're you know you you're paying tuition and you can take these courses as part of your budget. Um, otherwise, a lot of these technical schools that are not college or, or um, high school are very expensive, and so you end up going into quite a bit of of debt to uh, to get these these this training. Um, however, once you get the training and you successfully complete the courses, it does help you better get a foot in the door at maybe a higher level other than just entry level. So for instance, if you had managed to get a Cisco CCNA or even better, like a second level Cisco, like a, like a CCMP, um, your chances of being able to get in at something that pays you know, a few more dollars than minimum wage is better. All right, so education always pays off. It's just kind of a return on investment type of question you have to ask yourself. How much am I willing to spend to you know to to get started in the career? But if you're lucky enough to have these courses offered at your high school or your college, definitely that would be the way to go because if you can show these classes have been taken and passed, and if you've got some kind of verifiable certification, your chances of of moving to the top of the stack of applicants is much better. Now. The, um, the last way, which I numbered number two because I didn't pay attention to my editing before I published this video, but this is actually number three, so let's change that to number three. So the third option is going to be good for two reasons. One is if money is limited, and two is if you're not college or high school age anymore, or is you're, you're maybe already in a career, but now you're thinking you want to make a career change but you can't quit your current job and maybe you don't have a lot of extra money to throw at you know night courses so certifications are something you can do yourself all you have to do is an internet search on the word um, IT certification or technology certification or Cisco certification what certifications are is an industry standard in the IT space where you do some learning either by taking a course or taking a course online or just simply purchasing the book and doing the preparation yourself and then taking an exam once you're ready once you pass that exam you get what's known as a certification these certifications act as great indicators to prospective employers because it allows them to look at that and say aha he's got a Cisco certification so I know that if he has a cert certification from Cisco he must know a, B, and C in the networking area. He must know IP technologies. He must know routing protocols and switching. Where it's it's a way of verifying that you've you have a certain body of knowledge. So you'll find as you get into the IT space that certifications can be just as valuable as a four-year college education. In fact, you'll notice when you look at um, job postings, it will say four-year degree in computer science and or certifications and or uh, equivalent experience. So experience and certifications are very valuable in the IT space. If I was going to tell somebody off the street, you know, what would be a great way to get started with a certification, I would say either an A plus or a Network Plus certification. Um, you can buy the book. I think the book is less than thirty, maybe forty dollars. You read the book. Um, there's all kinds of free information online too to help you to get ready for these certifications. The test is usually, I think, it's either a hundred or maybe hundred fifty dollars. You, you know, so once you're ready, you go to one of these designated testing centers like Sylvan and you take the test and you pass the test, then you're certified. All right, so certifications are a great way to get into the business, particularly if you don't have time to take a course um, because it allows you to learn at your own pace. Um, there's also online courses, like for instance, the Cisco Academy, I think it's netacademy.com, um, they offer stuff. So, but again, I'm not a big fan of going into a lot of debt just to get the education. Um, certifications are kind of my, I'll tell you what, I'll just tell you how I did it. With me, I started off as a cable puller. I did a lot of on-the-job training, and then I got some certifications. I got a, I got a Cisco CCNA certification several years ago, and then I also got a uh, Voice over IP um, SSCA certification. And those were great at helping me get into either new positions or just when I was I've done a lot of work as a as a uh, independent contractor so they've helped me uh, pick up new contracts by having those uh, designations on my uh, dossier anyway so I hope that information was helpful we'll do another video about the ways you can actually start doing paid work 
Um, but for now, um, this is where we are in terms of, of, you know, how you need to get the knowledge you would need uh, to get into this business. So I hope that helps you out. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.